So in introducing uh, videos about Aikido, uh, one of the uh, most important sets of information is a little bit of a co context about uh, how we move and what we call things. In general, uh, the Japanese names for techniques fall into two categories. There are numbers, which are arbitrary, the first technique, the second technique, the third technique. Um, and then there are names, which are all, almost all descriptive. Uh, whereas in a lot of Chinese martial arts, something will be named uh, Crouching Willow or something like that. Um, in Japanese, um, the technique names that have come down to us are mostly descriptions. Um, one hand grabs the wrist on the right side, that sort of thing. Um, so when you hear uh, numbers, um, in counting Aikido techniques, it will sound like each, ni, san, shi, go, rok, chi, hach, ku, ju, uh, and then begins to repeat going on from there. And uh, the names of the attacks are things like uh, kata te dori, which is one hand grabs one wrist on one side, or kata dori, one hand grabs one shoulder on one side, or shomen, uchi, meaning front strike, shomen, just like the um, the picture and the calligraphy you saw me standing in front of before is the shomen, the front of the dojo. Uh, uchi being strike. So shomen uchi is a strike to the front of the head. Yokomen uchi is a is a strike to the side of the head. It comes straight up and then comes to something like an angle, kind of like a curveball in baseball. It looks like it's going to be this way, but then it goes that way. Uh, and there are all these names that are descriptive, basically. Um, the base of Aikido, since it is a jujitsu, um, probably most closely aligned to Daito Ryu Jiu Jitsu, but also to Shinto Yoshin Ryu Jiu Jitsu, um, is the, the keeping of one's balance and the structure of one's body and then moving that structure without losing one's balance. So some of the basic principles are Shise, which refers to posture, Kuzushi, which is taking, up, taking someone's balance, and um, Aiki, or blending. Uh, blending is also Awase. But um, what we're going to start with is um, what draws a lot of people um, to the art, which is uh, the keeping of balance, literally, um, and not necessarily emotionally in this regard. But um, I want to keep my knees over my toes. Um, and there are several themes, I'll say, that are all cumulative. So you practice them one at a time, but then you're expected to do them all at the same time when you're executing complex technique. So my knees will be bent over my toes, my head will be lifting up as though there were a string in the middle of my crown lifting up, my chin goes toward my chest just a little bit, and my eyes focus on the horizon, and they're soft focused. Now I'm looking directly at the camera, now I'm soft focused to take in as much information as I can, so I see information, not a particular thing. So knees bent over toes, head lifting up, chin down, eyes at the horizon, soft focused. Then I pay attention to my breathing, uh, I want to breathe generously so that my body gets the message that all is well and my, my, and my mind is oxygenated. I have, lots of, I have what I need and my body gets the message that all is well. It has plenty. So I'm breathing deeply into my belly. Instead of my shoulders going up and down, my belly goes in and out and my body fills with energy as an in addition. That's part of what key means. The uh, I key do, the central character, refers to an image of steam coming up from rice uh, as there's uh, various metaphors are applied. At any rate, the balance is maintained as we move by opening and closing the hips like a hinge. So, for instance, if I put all my weight on my left foot, I can move my right foot without my head moving around indicating that I've lost my balance. So, I'll open and close my right hip with all the weight in my left, and then once I've prepared the new foot, I'll pull myself toward it. And then my back foot is free, and I can move it without my head wobbling. So uh, one of the tests of balance is that you'll move back and forth between your feet. And when you shuttle, you'll float a foot to check and see if really you have your balance. If your feet are too widely spaced, when you go forward, your head will have to tip for you to be able to lift your foot. And unless you're doing it on purpose, that's probably a balance loss. So we open and close our hips like hinges. And then when we move, we do so in very specific ways. And there are lots of ways to move, but these are some basic ones. We call them Thai Sabaki which roughly means body management. Uh, a pivot, for instance, would leave my, we my um, weight in my back foot, I'd close my front hip, I'd place it where I want it, and then I'd take the knee, take it over the toe as I invest that side with weight, and by doing so, it changes my orientation. I then open my other hip, and I'm facing the opposite direction, so I pivoted. Our hands and feet always match. That's another good theme in Aikido, is that rather than um, our hands 
and being in opposition like you would when you're walking, um, they'll stay together so that when one side of your body moves, your hand moves in coordination with it. So a pivot looks like it's not looking like this. Uh, a moving pivot is uh, as an entrance, you're going into something, and so the word used to refer to it is EV mean, which means entering. So I exaggerate almost as though I were going to side kick, and then I move in and, and draw my foot along with me. So I'm entering, traveling, here you mean. Uh, another basic movement is called tenkan, which means body turning. And I close the front hip as though I were going to pivot, and then I sweep the back foot. And then I adjust the front foot in order to be comfortable. And I've changed my entire body weight uh, with my hands aligned with my hips so that anyone attached to me would have been pulled by my whole body weight around in a circle. That's called tenkan. Um, there's right and left side stepping, sounds fairly simple. You move your foot to the side and then you change in that direction. All my weight's in my front, I move my foot to the side almost as though I were kicking from the hip, and then I adjust by bringing the back foot. The basic stance um, we, we adopt is called hanmi. It means basically half body. Whereas uh, a horse stance, for instance, from karate is square, and you're delivering your power in that way. Aikido stands as though we were afraid of being shot with an arrow or struck by something. So instead of being square, I um, am on the angle a lot. It's though my back foot with the back of a triangle, and the point comes in front of my foot in front. Uh, so let's see, we've done sidestepping, we've done pivoting, we've done irimi, which is a traveling pivot, we've done tenkan, which closes the front and sweeps the back. Uh, two steps are also important. If you leave your front foot so you don't telegraph your movement and you close your back hip across you, and then invest the front with knee with weight, which turns you in the same way that you would punch. You've then completed a closed two-step. I don't allow my partner to, to know that I'm going to move by opening or changing anything. I just close and turn. And I, I've turned on a dime, so to speak. And then an open two-step allows you to take more space. You open the front hip and the front knee and the front toe, and then you take your and your hands and, and um, feet, again, remain uh, parallel. Close two-step, open two-step. Um, these are basic Aikido movements, and there are several more, but these are the ones we practice over and over again as our basic.